Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Redis Monthly Live. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Guy Royce, and and with me, as always, is Garth. I, I mean, uh, Justin Castilla, uh, here to uh, be uh, sort of my co-host and uh, present the uh, Redis Command of the Month. And uh, tonight we have, um, as you can see here on my screen, uh, Anders. Uh, I, pra I practiced his name earlier. I'm, a, I'm now now that I'm live, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, get all panic and get it wrong. Ostrom. Uh, Very good. Um, Anders Ostrom is uh, joining us tonight. Um, he's going to talk to us about uh, Red Grease, uh, which is a uh, library that he uh, has developed to work with Redis Gears. Justin is going to do the command of the month, of uh, uh, which is going to be sort. So that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, if you're uh, not familiar with the program, uh, Redis Monthly Live is, uh, well, it's monthly. Uh, we're streaming this live from the internet, and it's all about Redis. So uh, you can tell that the name has lots of creativity and imagination put into it. Um, We've got lots of uh, great content that we have planned for the upcoming months. Uh, we've got a couple of videos in the can already. You can go out and check those out. Um, but before we uh, get into any of that, let me let me go ahead and stop my take this little screen off here. Uh, I thought it was nice just to have a little uh, little chit chat with everyone, uh, see how everyone's doing, uh, maybe uh, uh, share with everyone where you're coming from and um, you know uh, what your role is and uh, well you know what your talk's going to be about. So I'll start with myself since I'm already talking. Uh, my name is Guy Royce. I'm a developer advocate at Redis. I'm based out of Columbus, Ohio, and a lot of what I do is, well, this. So, um, Justin? Hey, Justin here. Um, I'm based out of Oakland, California. I am also a developer advocate. Um, and right now, I'm just fresh out of uh, releasing a new course, um, our Redis at Scale course at Redis University. So please feel free to check that out. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about one of our commands called sort. It's small, yet powerful. And Anders? Excellent. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Anders. Uh, I'm originally from Sweden, but since a few years now, I'm operating a small business out of Singapore, uh, focusing on uh, uh, real-time screen processing, video analytics, and similar things, often relying on Redis. So I'm going to talk about one of our uh, a small open source Redis Gears client that we've been developed uh, earlier this year. So I'm going to ask a random question that I didn't uh, ask, uh, didn't uh, tell, I didn't warn anyone here on the stream um, before we started that I was going to ask this question. So, so just a moment, pause for terror. Um, what is your uh, what's your favorite Redis command? Uh, we were talking backstage earlier about how we, I, I enjoy and, and Justin and I both enjoy pronounce, pronouncing our Redis commands. And so uh, that leads to some favorite ones. I was just kind of curious if anyone ha else had a favorite Redis command other than me. Well, I always play off all the commands just by saying them out loud and trying to figure out if I can say them a different way. And that's like a thing of mine. I like saying words strangely like oregano instead of oregano just to make people really confused. That just makes you British, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, but I absolutely love the word smooth. S move. Which is like, man, uh, S, S move. And it's just, it just, it, it flows off the tongue so elegantly. And um, people just look at me really weird when I talk about it uh, with Redis. So I stick with smooth. 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 That's smooth, Justin. <laughs> And for me, I think in terms of, I have to say RG Py execute or arg execute. I don't know how you would pronounce it. Uh, mainly because of the topic of my my presentation, maybe. But I, I think it's a really really powerful command. In terms of name, I actually really like uh, last session's uh, uh, command of the month, the burr poplum push. I think that I don't remember how you pronounced it, but I think that's that's a that's a that's a sweet command name. Yeah, that was, that was exactly how I would say it. Burp, <laughs> push. Yeah, yeah uh, Justin and I were looking at it, and it just seemed like HR puff and stuff. Right? <laughs> <BR -popple push. laughs> uh, I, I, I think from a functionality point of view, my, fav my the Redis commands that always uh, I find the most interesting are the geo ones. Uh, you know, the geo sets and and being able to do you know you know, find, you know, Bigfoot sightings within a radius. That tends to be a thing that I do a lot with Redis. Um, but as far as the ones for pronouncing, uh, I like Z uh, Inkerby, which I pronounce Zinkerby. And I always think that's like the name of a, 
like we you got all these Redis commands and like characters in a fantasy novel or in a D Dungeons and Dragons game. And Zinkerby is the evil wizard uh, who's trying to take over the town of Hinkerby. So, um, so that, that that tends to be my favorite one to pronounce. Uh, so, uh, Justin, uh, Suze is on here, and she says that totally makes you British. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, com didn't fail me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Simon pop, uh, peeked up and said that uh, S uh, uh, Srand member uh, is uh, is his favorite, which is actually a really cool one because it, it picks a random item from a set, and you could use that for like a pick a name from a hat sort of functionality. So that's pretty cool. Right. Um, so cool. Well, uh, I just thought that'd be a little fun to have a little chit chat before we uh, got into the, all the presenting and stuff. Um, Justin, uh, do you feel like you're ready to talk about sort tonight? Absolutely. Let's go for it. Cool. Well, I'm going to give you the screen and then I'm going to hide Anders and myself. So here we go. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the sort command. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, it is uh, with the theme, the sort and the stone. So if you've seen the Disney classic, the sword, the stone, this will be a welcome treat. If not, then I highly recommend, recommend you check it out. Okay, so um, what is the sort command? Uh, it returns the sorted elements contained in the key. So it's very similar to any other sort function or method that you might find in any other language. Um, and it's very easy to use on the surface. So it's just sort and then the key. Um, but of course, there's many options like many other Redis commands. Um, you can use sort on a list, on a set, or on a sorted set. And you can also use it in conjunction and next to and adjacent to hashes. Um, and we'll look at that a little bit later. And then the time complexity. Um, that's somewhat considerable. It's O of N plus M times log of M, where N is the number of elements and M is the number of returned elements. So it does cost considerable amounts, but there's a way to actually cache it. So we'll check that out a little bit later near the end of this. So, and uh, forewarning, this is quite a dense little talk on sort. So bear with me. I'll, I'll warn you when it gets a little, little tough. Okay, so this is the most simple sort um, in action. We create a list of five, three, one, two, and four. And then we simply call sort on our list of numbers and it goes in numerical order, lowest to highest. Now, let's add some more. Let's send it to descending. So it goes five, four, three, two, one. Now these are just numbers. If we wanna do um, you know, alphanumeric combinations, it's not a problem at all we'll add the alpha option. And so it will do it lexicographically. I think I pronounced that correctly. If not, no regrets. Um, and of course, the descending option works as well. Now you'll see that I also used the option limit and then followed by two numbers. The first number is the offset. Uh, so where we want to start within our list and then the count, how many we actually want to display. So this is great for pagination. Um, if you want to go through a sorted list or set or sorted set, um, and there's numerous values. So here I am uh, descending. So I wanted to get a total of three from the beginning. So that's five, four, three, user five, user four, user three. Uh, here's another example. Um, I want to start descending with an offset of two, an account of two. So I skipped user five and user four, and now I have user three and user two because I wanted two total. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bananas as far as list sorting goes. Now let's get a little fun. All right, so I apologize for all the information on the screen, but we, we have to see here how it works. Um, so let's say I have a list called my list, which is five, three, one, two, and four. And then I have some simple Redis uh, strings, um, wait one, wait two, wait three, wait four, wait five. And you see an associated value to those. Now those values are going to be weights that we're going to assign to our numbers in our list. So weight underscore one is associated with the uh, number one uh, within uh, our list. So if I call sort my list by weight underscore asterisk, that's saying apply the weights from all the keys that begin with weight underscore and use that as a sorting weight instead of the normal ascending or descending weight. 
So what you end up getting is this, three, two, one, four, five, instead of one, two, three, four, five, or if you're descending, five, four, three, two, one. So it applies these weights to your list. This is a very simple uh, example, of course. You might maybe use this for ID numbers or things like that. OK, so now let's go a little bit deeper. That number, the output of numbering from the list with the different weights wasn't really useful. But now if we assign some uh, numbers to it, or some, I'm sorry, some names or values to it, now we can start seeing why it's useful. So now I did sort my list by weight. And now I'm calling get on another uh, group of keys. Now these keys are just simply key user one, value Merlin. These are all characters from Sword in the Stone. So Merlin, Wart, Archimedes, Madame Mim, and Sir Ector. These are all characters and they all have associated keys of user one, two, three, four, and five. So this get user underscore star will take that previous list. Again, remember three, two, one, four, five. And it will look up the users that start with user underscore and associate that number with them. So we get Archimedes, Wart, Merlin, Madame Mim, and Sir Ector in a list of uh, weights. Okay. okay. Now we're going to build on that. Now instead of using string values for like, you know, user one, just Merlin, we're going to make hashes. So now I have user one, name Merlin, job wizard. User two, name, wart, job, apprentice. Archimedes, the owl. Madame Mim, the witch. Sir Ector, the knight. So we have multiple values in here. So now let's build even more. So now previously, instead of just getting a user, I want to drill into each hash object and get the field that I choose. So in this example, I'm choosing name. It should look exactly like what I did previously. So sort my list by weight and after that, I want to get all the users with that list that I created, and I want to get their name. So I'm getting Archimedes, War, Merlin, Madame Mim, and Sir Ector. And that's through this little dash and greater than symbol. So just to see it again in a different light, let's try it with their job instead of their name. So sort my list by weight. So I got a sorted list by my particular custom weight, and then I sort of move those over to get all the users with those sorted numbers. And then I got their specific jobs. Whew. I know. This is this is somewhat interesting, somewhat deep. It's a, it's a very Redis uh, command, which I really, really like, um, because everything on the surface is not ever what it seems. So the cool thing is, after doing all that, you can actually store this new list. Um, so it's just by simply tacking on the last option, store, and then the name of the key you want to store it to. Now, this is cool because you can actually cache this by adding a TTL. So you can look this up at later times. You're not going to have to call this sort, which will take O of n time, times m plus log of m. It will just be a simple lookup of a list, which is much faster. So um, after you're done playing with your sort, store it as a TTL. Cool. Does that make sense? I hope it did. If not, let me know in the in the chat. Um, this is kind of fun. It kind of blew my mind over the weekend how cool it was. So I might maybe want to do a video that's a little bit more in depth and have a little bit more of a real life uh, application. So we'll see. Um, so what's in the works? What am I doing right now? Uh, RU301 running Redis at scale is live. People are taking it and loving it. And I've had a lot of great feedback from it. So if you haven't taken the class yet, please consider taking it. Um, our Redis certified developer exams are at no cost now. Um, so it does require some prerequisites, but you've probably already taken those classes. If not, you should take them. They're fun. Um, and yeah, as always, we're launching new videos. I'm trying to get more ideas from you. So let me know what you want to hear. And by golly, we'll probably make the video and give you a little bit of a shout out on it too. So please let me know. So yeah, check out our Discord, Redis University, and our YouTube um, at Redis Inc. And yeah, thanks for listening to my sort command talk through. Thanks, Justin. No problem. Uh, sort is got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't looked at it before. That cl I mean, I've looked at it in the superficial way of, oh yeah, I can sort my output. Uh, but it's got a lot of sophistication to it. I, 
I, I both I, I kind of want to dig into it. I, it was funny that you said uh, that we, we you were thinking about maybe making a video of it because I literally posted in in our team Slack that hey we should oh. make a video on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean so. we could we I've just you know scratched the surface with some little you know toy examples, but we can get pretty deep with this. So I'm going to start pulling some ideas for it. Excellent. Well, very cool. So thank you. Um, thank you very much, Justin. Um, there weren't any uh, questions in, in in the chat, so. Um, did you have any questions, Anders? <laughs> no, I wasn't aware of uh, all the functionality Sort had, but I was pretty amazed by that. I thought it was just sorting, and, and that's it. It's a, a powerful query language in there. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, wait and buy and all that. I'm, I'm excited to dig into it. Yeah, I saw the arrows. I thought, are we doing Lambas and JavaScript here? I'm confused. <laughs> 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 so very cool. So. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Justin. Uh, Anders, uh, you're up next. Um, I'm just going to give you the floor. I've already introduced you. Uh, I've talked. To, you're going to talk about Red Grease, which I'm uh, very curious to see uh, about. Uh, I didn't uh, actually see your talk at Redis Conf, which was on the same topic. Uh, this is going to be like an expanded version of that. Exactly. exactly. Cool. Slightly, well, uh, slightly modified version. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and turn on your uh, your screen there, and thank uh, you. get rid of this Justin guy. Bye, Justin. Bye. See you at the Bye. end. <laughs> and uh, Anders, the floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you very much, Guy. Uh, so yes, uh, as you heard a few times, I'm going to present Red Grease, which is an uh, open source uh, package that uh, I've been developing earlier this year. Let me get the mouse out of the way. So uh, before we get into the details of what Red Grease actually is, I have to go through a little bit of the background particularly talking about uh, uh, Redis Gears, which is the technology from Redis that it's built upon. And uh, then I'm also going to show you uh, a demonstration of some of its features. And that's, that's going to be quite code heavy, but hopefully you can follow along and hopefully I don't drag out too much. Uh, you already heard about me. Uh, my name is Anders and I'm based out of Singapore where I have my own small little business and doing all kinds of fun stuff. Um, but Enough of that. So the reason why this all came to be was because I was working on a an application uh, that was a little bit weird. It was a completely uh, it's not really user uh, uh, facing, uh, but it had a lot of different uh, clients uh, that needed to process quite large uh, uh, number of streams with relatively high I/O and many different uh, clients or users in the sense of other applications and services that were implemented in many different uh, languages, Rust, Julia, et cetera. Uh, so I needed to, I wanted to have some server-side stuff going on to make the clients as lean as possible and, and not having each, each client reinventing the wheels for some of the common uh, uh, things. So I wanted something to run uh, on server-side centrally. Um, and latency uh, was uh, one of the major concerns. So uh, Redis was already on top of my mind when we started this project. And uh, that's partly because I have prior very good experience with using Redis. And uh, there are many clients available. So there's no problem there in interacting. And of course, there's open, open source and enterprise versions, of course. And it's highly customizable. And we all know about the performance and the features. We just heard about Sort that has more features than I ever could imagine. And uh, of course, scale, uh, highly scalable, and it has a very nice ecosystem, as we'll dive into shortly. We all know that. Um, so basically, my, my, my ideal scenario would be to actually extend Redis with a Redis module. So, so Redis modules, if you're not aware, is basically a way of uh, adding code to Redis so you can run server side. You can add commands, new commands to, to the Redis command set, and you can run server-side code, and you can interact with the key space, and you can do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, and it has a lot of great benefits. Uh, of course, you have data locality. You compute where your data is. Uh, it's modular in nation because it is modules. Um, but And it also has a very high performance because you're basically writing this in C or, or anything uh, compatible, and uh, you get, get the performance thereafter. Um, but there are challenges, of course, in writing things in C. Uh, C is not, uh, I'm not a C superstar. Uh, so I found this approach a little bit challenging, particularly with the, the, the experimentation cycle. It was 
not easy for me to experiment in, in, in figuring out what works. Uh, I had to write the code, compile it, uh, package, deploy, restart the server, etc. etc. It, it was quite tedious and, and uh, um, I also introduced a fair, fair bit of problems for myself. So and so it was it was not really the most smoothest way of doing things for me in the experimentation phase. So in comes Redis Gears. So Redis Gears is basically a module, Redis module already developed by Redis Labs, or now called Redis, I believe, um, which is a, I think it was announced a few years ago, uh, and it basically allows you to execute code, uh, Python code predominantly, on your, on your Redis server. So you can execute, you can, you can have a little snippet of code on your client side, and you can shoot it off to your Redis uh, uh, instance or cluster and have it execute there, and you can interact with the key space and all these goodies. And uh, it's very neat. Uh, so there are many different use cases that it is general purpose. You can really use it for anything. It's a, it's a general purpose um, uh, com compute platform. Uh, but there are some some common um, use cases. Sorry for the formatting here. Um, but for example, you can have you can use if you use Redis as a cache, which which I know a lot of people do. You can basically only interact with Redis, and Redis takes cares through gears with uh, with uh, writing through or writing behind to the actual uh, permanent store that you might have. So you only your clients only have to talk to Redis, and everything is handled by gears on the Redis cluster. So that's quite neat. That's not my use case, but but I guess that that could be a very interesting use case for many. Uh, you can have you can you can register gears gear functions to to Redis and have them react to streams, etc., which is very powerful and I use that a lot. So you can have things running, you can push things to one stream, and then you can have a gear that processes the elements of that stream, pushes it to new streams, and, and do all kinds of, of weird and wonderful things. It's really cool, um, and you can you can perform uh, queries so. Being a key value store, Redis is not really uh, used for, for performing queries. But with, with Redis Gears, you can actually do queries across your Redis clusters. So cluster-wide, not only on single instance. And that's, that's, that's really useful when you have uh, access patterns, which is optimal for, for key value stores. But you have some really rare use cases where you actually want to query your data. And I had such use cases. And, and I have an example that is a little bit of a convoluted version of that. Um, but but then it's really powerful to be able to do it when you need it, um, and uh, you can also orchestrate. It's very it's very good in con conjunction with another Redis module called Redis AI. So they work very well together to orchestrate uh, AI model serving. Uh, so so that's very interesting as well if you're interested in, in that. And there are many other use cases. It's general purpose. So basically, what what it lets you do. I'm not going to go too much into the detail. But Redis has already Redis Labs or Redis has already done all the heavy lifting in this module. So it basically uh, you you can you can write a little snippet of code and you can register or run them uh, in batch uh, onto your Redis cluster and it handles all the distribution and orchestration of the results um, uh, uh, across your, your your nodes in your cluster. Uh, and it it supports natively a lot of the the regular. Uh, uh, big data type operations like reduce and aggregate. Well, it's not called reduce; it's called uh, aggregate and group by and map, etc. Um, and you can you can parameterize these uh, functions with you with arbitrary Python code, pretty much, which is really really powerful. So back to my problem. So the solution of my problem was well, I'll just use Redis Gears instead because one of the the many ways you can use Redis Gears is to create a trigger, and it basically lets you create a command pretty much a custom command and when you when you run that command it's rg trigger and the name of your command that you have registered through gears and then you can pass along arguments and when you trigger that command with your whichever client it doesn't have to be a python client just because the 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 trigger was registered as a python code you can you can use any other client and you can run this code and it runs on the redis cluster and you get all the benefits of data locality and you get the modularity, et cetera, et cetera. So this was really nice for rapid development and trying out uh, commands, um, writing in Python, which I'm a little bit more comfortable with, and very rapid prototyping because I don't have to restart the the, the server to, 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 to run them, et cetera. So very, very nice. Maybe you don't need that for ordinary models, modules either, but I don't know how. Um, so th this, this allowed me to have a very fast workflow. 
So I could I could basically just write the code and execute it immediately, see how it worked, try again. And I even wrote a little simple uh, command line tool that allowed me to, to monitor a directory where I had my little functions. And it basically, as soon as there was a change, it, it just registered that as a, as a, as a Redis, uh, uh, Redis Gears uh, trigger, and I could use it immediately. So very fast development cycle with this kind of approach. Um, and that basically gradually evolved into a package of its own. So I started to add more and more features. Uh, I'm a little bit of a sucker for using type annotations and having good, um, uh, what's it called, type hints or, or uh, what's it called, um, uh, comments in, 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 in your commands. So I, I fleshed it out with, with uh, good commenting on, on the functions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I created uh, client side function classes we'll we get to in a mo moment and more and more features. It kind of grew in features, um, partly because I thought it was fun, but partly also because I needed it. Um, and then what, what, what kicked it off into an actual open source project was that I, I was, came back from a, from a trip and I was stuck in two weeks in, in quarantine here in Singapore. Uh, that was uh, earlier this year. And I couldn't really access my, my, uh, my main project equipment basically. So I decided to work on this. So I spent those two weeks working on this pretty much. And in February, I released the first version under under MIT license uh, on GitHub. A little bit as a celebration of the Chinese New Year, which is a big thing here in Singapore. Um, so now if I switch to a, a demo, if I figure out how to do that, that's not work. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna switch to a, a quick demo, unless there are any questions, doesn't look like. Um, so basically, it is it is a, a a client for Redis Gears. So one of the basic things that you would want to do is to insta instantiate such a client. So what you can do, for example, you you can just uh, instantiate it. It's very similar to the normal Python uh, client. So if you're familiar with a with a usual Python uh, client for Redis, this is very similar. It's just you use another package and a slightly different name. You can also, with the same in Redis, also natively supports the cluster uh, version. So here I have a cluster with three nodes running on 30,001, two, and three. And you connect to one of them and it figures out that the others exist. And you can actually, if you have an existing connection to a Redis, uh, you have a Redis connection already, you can, you can instantiate just the gears portion by, by passing your, your existing connection to this gears uh, constructor. So if you run that, uh, luckily that works. So you can see here that we can, we can connect to it here. So I'm just pinging it, pinging it here. And, and for the standalone gears uh, client, I, I, I get some Python stats. Uh, so you see that that work, works all fine. Um, then for these uh, Redis gears clients, you have all the usual Redis command support. So you can use it just as you would if you don't have an existing connection that you prefer using in your legacy code, you can just use this one and do all the Redis commands. So here I'm just adding some, some random uh, uh, keys, uh, three of them, I believe. Um, and then you can do on, on, the, on the client, you have this gears uh, property, which gives access to all the, the gears, the Redis gears modules command set. So one of the commands is pi stats. So if I access that one, I can get the, the Python stats for each of the nodes in my, in my cluster. So here, here we see that the nodes is are the keys in this dictionary that is returned, and I get all these uh, Python stats. So by default, or uh, the, the red grease client returns structured objects. Uh, so, so here it gets a PyStats object which contains all the details. So it's not dictionaries. It's just the way I happen to like things. So if you don't like it that way, then unfortunate, uh, but this is how it's done. And you can do other things like get information about the cluster. So there's a lot of information here about the all kinds of stuff, uh, which you might be interested in, in, in uh, if you're very technical. Um, refresh clusters and other functions, but you have basically have all the gears commands set here. These are not really the most exciting ones, just showing that they are available. Um, then you can run uh, the gear function. So that's maybe, <laughs> that's that's the main purpose of this. So the the main Redis gears Red, Redis gears module, uh, the the command pi execute is the, is the command that executes uh, Python code, and you pass the Python code as a string. 
So here they have some specific, they have some built-in um, uh, classes and objects that you can use. So the gears builder is the is the class that you use in Redis gears to to build your function. And by default, it it creates a function that iterates through the key space. So this is the simplest gears functions you can you you can do is basically iterate through all the keys in the key space, and that's it. So if we run that here. We get all the keys in the key space, and we get a lot of inform metadata along with the keys. So we get the value here for the for the key bar here, for example, which is a hash. But we also get things like events because you can trigger on other things like um, keys being created or deleted, etc. But here we're just iterating, so we we don't get any events. But you get a lot of information here just to give get your flavor of of the basic gear. Uh, we can create another gear function here uh, that. Uh, what it does here, it's basically iterates through all the keys, and then we take each of the key, these records that we have, and I, I'm lifting out the key, the key out of it, and I create a tuple with the key and the type. So okay, I run this, bam, and I get this. So here, here's all the, here's the key and the type. So I lifted that out. Okay, uh, very exciting stuff. And then here, for example, just last, we can also do things. Count is a function that is built into Redis gears. So we can basically take here, here very simple gears that counts. This, this is just silly. There are other ways to do this. But, but you could, for example, just take iterate through all the keys in the key space and count them up and run that. So if we run that, bam, we see, wow, we have three keys. Um, so just to show you what you can do. But all this, as you see, is, is by strings. So that is how Redis gears module works. You send it a string with Python code in it, and it uh, executes it. But with Red Grease, it allows you to build these functions uh, dynamically with objects. So for example, a very similar object here using Red Grease is that I basically take the, re uh, uh, the keys only reader that reads through the keys, and I count them. And then I create the function here by adding run. So this run here it doesn't actually run it in this case. It just says that this is the function, and it runs as batch. Another closing function would be register, and then register as a function that, that triggers on an, ex an, uh, an event. We'll, we'll get to that later. So that, then I can execute this function. So if I do that, same thing happens. Oh, there we go. So now I actually I, a little bit of a sleight of hand here. I switched from the single instant to the cluster. And on the cluster, I do ha I have prepared a little bit of data in there. So there is a data set, or part of a data set called Coco, which is an image annotation data set that is used for um, for uh, uh, object detection uh, algorithms. And I think Mikael in the last episode was using a model that was trained on this data set. If you if you saw that episode, um, so basically here I, I did a very similar function. I just iterated through the keys and I counted them up. But here I did it not as a string. I just did it constructed the function uh, dynamically here with red grease, grease constructs. Um, so, but 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 what also red grease allows you to do is that you you can you can uh, reuse functions. So here I create a function that iterates through uh, all the keys that matches this pattern, and I lift out the values of those keys. And that's a function here. I don't run it yet, but that's just my, my first class function uh, that I've given a name. And then I can create another function, which counts them up. And then I then I create a, a third function, which takes the same function. And I do some filtering here. So the filter here I happen to do is I just filter out the images where the height equals the width. So that means basically square images, uh, toy examples, of course. And then I have a fourth function here, which takes those square images and and takes four of them. So collect here is, if, since we have a um, cluster, uh, each of the functions runs by default on each shard. So collect basically takes the results of each, uh, the results from each shard and collects them together. Uh, so we have them all in one place. And then I limit just take four of them. And then I take and lift out the Coco URL, which is one of the fields inside the records. And you can see here, if I run this, I still haven't run them. I just created functions. So this basically all these things, if I look at the type of these things, they're all functions. They're open functions because it means I can add more things to them. So now let's execute those. Um, no, no, sorry. I will do that in a moment. First, I'll just show you that, of course, you can create new functions, uh, Gears function dynamically. So I have a very silly, silly function, which just takes a year, and it creates a function that 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 changes the the keys the the pattern it, it it of the keys it iterates through and it also filters on only hash types so 
but basically here are creating a, fu a function through a function. Uh, sounds more uh, exotic than it is, but I, I just registered that function there. We will use it later. And then there are a few ways to execute these functions because so far we just created them. So I can do it the textbook way, which is a little bit, uh, is the way that is documented in the Red, Redis Gears documentation. And basically I take a function, here we take the image count, and I run it, and I send, after run it, I, I, I basically tell the function that it's a, a batch kind of function. And it's still not executed just by adding run, it just says, it just closes the function and says that it's a batch kind of function. And then I send, give it to pi execute and it will run it. So here I run it, it's gonna take a little while because there are 133,000 images uh, on that matches this, this specific uh, function. Uh, and I can also execute them, if I just, oh, I lost myself, so there we go. So uh, I can also skip the run. So if, if I pass an open function to uh, uh, red, red grease pi execute and there is, it's not closed by run or register, which are the way, two ways in Redis case you currently can close a function or like define a function, uh, it will assume that you want to run it as batch. So here I did that, I didn't add the run, and so basically you don't really have to bother with that, which can be easy to forget. Uh, and it will assume it's a run, and it ran it here, and we see here that it has uh, about 900,000 annotations, this data set. Okay, very exciting. So um, uh, now I can, take, I, can, I, can, I can take some of the square images, and I, can, I, I have that function, which is some of the square images, four of them, if I remember correctly, and I can run it on the cluster. So there is another way of running it, you don't pass it to the pi execute of the of your gears function. You can just specify specif just specify the gears client directly in the run function. So this is an add-on in Red Redis uh, Red uh, Red Grease as well. So I can run this, take a little while, but basically here we get those four square images that we uh, had in our data set. So these are all square, hopefully. Yes, they are. That's what this looks like. Um, so you can do much more. So that's just a little bit of a warm up. What you can do. Um, Let's see, how are we on time? I still think we have a little bit of time. So I just want to go through a little bit of an odd thing where you can do a complex query on Redis, which I think is quite interesting. Um, so if we look at how the two annotations, so these are the weird keys that I'm storing the annotations in. Uh, it doesn't really matter the key structure here, but this is how it happens to be. Uh, if, you're, if you're a proponent of colons, sorry for you, I'm using slashes. Uh, learn to live with it. Um, then, um, so this is basically the hashes that I store my annotations in. So there are a lot of stuff in here, but most, most importantly, we have the image ID. So the annotation is basically saying there is an object here in the, in the image. This is the location. It specifies what's called the bounding box, the image, the image ID that we're saying that this object is in. And we're saying that this object is of category, in this case, one, which happens to be person. But this is how the annotation um, uh, object structure looks in Redis. Uh, so just so you know what it looks like. So let's say now that we want to count, to scroll down a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, so sorry. So first what we do is just, I just want to create, we have the, the, the category here, it's just a number. So I'm just create some helper dictionaries here and we don't have to go into the details, but basically helps us look up uh, the name of a category. So we get person instead of one, et cetera, and, and vice versa. So we just create those uh, backwards and forwards uh, uh, dictionaries just, 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 just to help things looking nicer. So here's, for example, the the name to ID uh, lookup uh, dictionary. Not, not very exciting, but, but we just need it later. So now if I want to query this, this, um, th these annotations, I can create, for example, this function down here. I hope it was formatted a little better. Okay, I'm sorry for this formatting. Um, can I zoom out a little bit? Maybe hope, hopefully this is readable. Oh, that didn't really help it. Uh, sorry for that. Okay, I will have to scroll. Um, um, so basically here, I can, uh, I create a new function here. So I take the instance annotation. So this is the function that, that selects the key space based on a year. So these annotations are categorized by year they were created. But basically this function creates, was, we saw it before and it creates a gears function. And then I use aggregate by, which, which is, which is um, a little bit like a reduce. So 
it takes three arguments. It takes an extractor. This is, so aggregate by is a Gears native function. It's not a Redis, uh, Red Grease function. It's a Redis Gears function. So it takes three, uh, four things. It takes an extractor, which basically takes the, the, the records that we're iterating over and extracts some kind of value from it. And this is the value we're going to group by. So we, we, or we're aggregating by this value. So here, we're basically aggregating by the image ID. So we want to count per image. Then we have our accumulator here. So we're just using a dictionary for an accumulating here. What we want to create is a dictionary that has the image ID and a dictionary of the different uh, objects annotated in that image. And then I have two, two oper uh, operators. So one is the operator that is applied on the records and the accumulator on each individual shard. And then there is a, a second operator that is applied on the results from each shard to group uh, to aggregate together on in, as a single result. So uh, not going to go into details here, but it's basically just uh, what these two functions do is that they basically uh, take the accumulator, they take the annotation, and they basically count them in the first step. So they count them up, add, adds them to the dictionary, the, the, the category ID, and it counts them. And then the second one just takes several such uh, uh, dictionaries and takes the, the sum of the score set. So you can, you can look into that. All this is available on the GitHub page. You can look into that if you want to. Um, let's run that. Sorry, I should have run it to begin with because it's going to take a little while. Um, but but basically what this does is that it, it, it extracts all the all the annotations by the ID. So a big, big you can think about it as a virtual dictionary from image ID to another dictionary, which is the object ID or the category ID and the number of them. So we will, when this finishes, it should take, oh, it should finish right. Oh, yeah, I print it in the next one. So if I print that out, we'll get something like this. Sorry for the scrolling. So we get something like this. We get the image, yada, 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 has these instances. It has a teddy bear, it has a teddy bear, it has a share, it has a person, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So we basically queried Redis here, which is kind of cool, and got uh, analytical results from, from Redis. I think this is, this is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and now, just for fun, I, I created this ridiculous uh, query language. So I, I, I can create a little query here uh, where I say I, I, I provide a category ID, and I give a range, minimum and maximum count that I want. And I, I used uh, epsilon here, or ellipsis, sorry for, I don't care, I could have used none, but I think this looks nicer. Um, but basically here, this little query here would say that I want between one or two trucks. I obviously want five or more bananas. I want exactly one person, and I want no bottle, bottles. So this is my little silly query language, and I, I execute that through uh, basically taking that previous function that we had, and I, I just filter them by something that interprets this. So I, I created this little constraint function up here. I'm not going to go into the details, but it basically creates a predicate based on a filter predicate based on, on this little query language. It's a very simple query language here. So if I run this thing, I should have done that uh, to begin with also. But basically what it will do now, it will run that previous function, uh, apply this, this uh, constraint filter, and I hopefully will get out images that fulfill this little query. Now, this is quite a crazy thing to do in, in Redis because this is definitely not the main use case of Redis. Uh, and, but but, but there, are, there are scenarios where you have uh, access patterns that fits very well into Redis, and then you have these really odd ones. Once in a blue moon, you, want, you need to troubleshoot something. You need to understand, for example, why, is, why does it seem to, like some data point is misbehaving? And it might be very nice to be able to do this kind of queries on, on your Redis, and I think that's really powerful. So here I got the result here. So I, I basically can see here that this image with this ID has, OK, now it's not decoded into the names, but I see it has different counts here. This one has 13 of uh, class 52, which I think is the banana. Well, to make it a little bit more uh, presentable, let's just show those pictures. So here, now we get the pictures, and we see that it indeed has, now I forgot the query. It was kind of stupid. So we want one or two trucks. We want a bunch of bananas, at least five one person and no bottles. So yes, we see here, I don't know where the truck is. I guess there is, oh yeah, he's standing in a truck, I guess. Um, and you see, we get all these functions, all these uh, images. Uh, so that, that's kind of cool, I think. Um, 
then I'm not sure if I will go through through this, but basically you can use you use um, um, Redis gears and of course Red Grease for uh, stream processing as well. So here I have a very toy example. I'll just run quickly through it without going through the code, I think, um, for the sake of time. But basically, I, I create a little mock example here where I have a bunch of, of users, and they each get a, um, a balance of credits or what have you. Um, and then I have a little function here. Let's see here. Where is it? Uh, uh, did I miss it? Oh, yeah, but sorry, sorry here. Uh, yes, I, I have a, so it's basically, it's, then I have um, a stream, which is called transactions. Here I use colons just to be confusing. Um, uh, where I basically, when, when there is an, a, a desired transaction, it's just pushed the transaction uh, message from which user to which user and, and amount. And it's just pushed to the stream, but it's not executed yet. So what I want to do is to have a gear that listens to the stream, takes the transactions, sees atomically if it's possible to do, given the, the balance that is available on the sender side, and performs it if it is, right? Um, so that's what we want to do, and uh, and here is exactly that that function that I want to execute on the server that does that. And the key thing here is that that uh, Redis Gears allows you to do uh, atomic por portions of your gear functions can be atomic. So it has this context handler atomic, in which when you when you the code that runs in here, which is basically the one that checks the account if there's enough on the sender side, et cetera. It's not very advanced, but it's a lot of rows. Um, it's run atomic, so we don't have any stupid race conditions, et cetera. So, so here, if I, did I run this or not? Uh, it looks like I did not. So I, and I registered this one. So here basically, here is actually the, the transaction function as well. I call it the transaction pipe for some reason. But basically, I create a stream reader, which is the, which, which is the Redis gears readers that reads from a stream, hence the name. And I just do an in initial mapping of the of the of the values in the stream to something easier to work with. The function is above, it's not that exciting. And then I run this handle transaction function, which was the one which would which one that has that atomic context handler in here. Um, and uh, and then I, I take this this uh, Redis Gears function and, I, and instead of running it, I using the re uh, register which basically, and I, I say I register it and it should listen to the streams that uh, matches this prefix, which is our transactions. I can also say cool things that I want to run it as a batch. Uh, so if, so it tries to batch them into groups of 10. And if if it hasn't reached a group of 10 within 30, I don't remember if it's seconds or milliseconds, milliseconds, I guess, uh, it, it will run it anyway. So you can do cool things like that for, for a little bit of optimization. And I ran this, and now I can also look. I can look at the registered functions. So I see here that I have two registered functions for some reason, which is going to cause problems. Um, uh, okay, uh, but I can now. Uh, we will see how much pro pro problem the co it causes. But basically, now I can and now I can attempt an, a random transaction. And, and remember that this function only adds a transaction request to a stream. It's all it does. So I ran that. But the gear took over, hopefully, and it actually performed the transaction. So we see here now the balance sheet here, a little bit silly. It actually see that it has done, uh, it has created a transaction here from user zero to user four of 91 somethings. Um, so, okay, this was just a single one. Just to make it fun, uh, we can just run, uh, hopefully, uh, in, in, in parallel here, a bunch of, uh, we run hundreds such transactions, uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds of them, and hundreds of those in parallel. So, uh, a bunch of them. That's hundred times hundred equals a bunch, and we run that. So we run, uh, we run that. Just trust me. This is what the code is supposed to do. And now, if we can look at the at the at the balance sheet, we see that there has been a bunch of transactions happening, and but the total difference from what we started is zero. So there was no. This is no definite proof, but it might convince you that it seems like there's no race condition going on here because the total amount of credits that we had has not changed. So uh, a toy example, but hopefully uh, it shows you that you can do quite powerful stuff with this. And for fun, I also implemented this. You can see the, the like a statement transaction history. And I think if we're lucky, no, we didn't. We're not lucky here. We'll see that when it fails in your transaction, it says that 
it failed because you don't have enough balance. So it also is logged here in, in, in a separate uh, stream. Um, anyway, so let's just clean things up. And I, how are we on time? Oh, I still have some time. So, so we can go to the final thing is uh, I want to show is my original use case, which was I wanted to create uh, custom commands. Uh, so, so this is my use case is not caching. So this is my silly attempt to try to appeal to, to, the, to the most common use case of Redis. So I'm sorry if it's naive in any stupid way. Uh, but basically, let's, say, let's assume that I have this cache function. So, and I want, this to, I want to run this on the Redis server. So I, 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 do, I basically want to have a system where I ask Redis, do you have this key, this URL? Do you have it as a key? If so, give me the data that you have cached already. Otherwise, please, Redis go and get the actual resource, cache it, and give me the result. So I, I only, as a client, I only speak to Redis, and I, uh, I get the results, hopefully, regardless, regardless if it's cached or not. So this is my naive attempt to do that. So you see here, we, we want to run this in a, in a, in a gear. Um, and I can interact with the key space through uh, this uh, command um, module. Uh, so I can do the normal things here. I can do the check if, if the key exists. I can get get the value, so it's very simple. If the key exists, I get it. Otherwise, I'll. So I, we can use third-party uh, packages. So in this case, I use the requests package. Uh, you can use pretty much I, anything. It's a it's maybe a strong a strong a strong um, a statement, but but you can you can use uh, third-party uh, um, uh, packages in your in your uh, gear functions. So basically, I use requests here to get the contents of the URL. I cache it, and I return the response. So, and then I create a gear function using the command reader, which basically I want to register this thing as a command now in 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 uh, uh, Redis gears. And all I do is basically I map this function over the uh, over the the command requests, basically. So this uh, command reader will basically trigger every time somebody triggers the command, and we'll get to that in a moment. And then I pass the, the zeroth element in, in the, in the um, argument is, is the name of the trigger itself, but we'll, we want to pass the second thing, which will be the URL. So we'll pass that to the trigger function. It takes the URL. It does all those magic things. And um, well, here, 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 we, here we just lift it out, and here we pass that to, to the cache get function that we have above. And I also add this here. I, I say that actually this, this function here has a requirement on the requests package. So this actually tells uh, Redis Gears that, oh, I should check if I have this package, and if I don't, I should get it. And you can qualify this with, with version uh, qualifiers, et cetera. Uh, but basically, this this tells uh, Redis Gears to, to get the package. And you can do things. You can actually pre so. If, if you're in an environment where you don't have internet access and you cannot download packages, there are ways around that, and I'm happy to support any questions around that, but it's possible to do. Um, but in this case, it basically asks uh, Redis Gears to, if you don't have the request package, go get it. And then I register this uh, command, uh, and I, re I, I register it as cache get, and I want to, and I also say I want to register it on the single instance. So I'm using the single instance Redis that we created before. And I don't want to convert the results to string because we're using images here. So we want to keep them binary. So if I, did I register it? No, I did not. So let's do that. Oh, that's not how you do it. There we do. Uh, hopefully that worked. Yep. So we did that. So now we can test it. So very simple, just test function. I have a bunch of URLs here. We cleared, the, you have to trust me, we cleared the Redis database before. So we don't have anything cached in there. And uh, I can basically now say that I want to go, uh, for each of these things, I want to get them, get them. I want to call the cache get trigger function, the, the, the gears function that we just created. And um, um, and I get the image data, and then I just show the image data. And uh, if I do that, we'll see here, hopefully, that the image just pops up. OK, this is not very exciting. But since these are, these are all cache misses now, so uh, because they're not in Redis, right? So this is not very exciting. But whoop, it will get them. So it gets them externally. And we see here that it took uh, about 12 seconds to execute. And then just to un indisputably prove that this is a caching, I'll just run this again. 
Poink, and it's much faster. That's because it's all cached in Redis. And sorry for the window here. Ah, and we hopefully, we will have executed that much faster. Yes, so that took about half a second now. So, way caching. And all I did was just talk to Redis. So I, I didn't, I didn't. My client library, which could have been in any language, I just, I just called this um, cache get, and and this is this is using the Gears command trigger, which which you can you, you don't have to use Redis uh, Red Grease to 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 call this to invoke this this uh, Gears functions once it's registered. You can use it in any any library that supports uh, uh, arbitrary Redis commands. Um, <clears throat> so so that's pretty powerful. Um, and then even bothered creating an even shorter version. <clears throat> so basically, I just create exactly the same function, nothing special there. But now I just decorate it with this red grease trigger, which basically tells me that I want to, I want to <clears throat> register this on the single instance. I same thing. I don't want to convert it to string. I have the same requirements, the request library, and I also have this additional thing that if this trigger already exists, then replace it. So you can put different values here. So it, there's uh, you can put it for replace it if it uh, just add it if it doesn't exist, ignore if it already exists. So that's but but here I want to replace it because. We have that trigger already from before. So if I do that, boink, that should have worked. So now I do the same thing. The difference here is now I don't have to, if you look at before, right, what we did here is that we 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 called the trigger command, which is a Redis Gears native command with the cache get as a string. Now here is a little bit of sugar. I basically just call cache get as if it was a local function in my client code. But it actually executes this on the Redis server as the Redis Gears function. So this is syntactic sugar. But it looks neat and it's cool, so why not? Here we go. So here are the functions. These are other URLs just to to, to show that we not cache them. And similarly, we can we can uh, I guess the wall time here should be about same similar. So if I do it again, yes, did the caching work? Oh yes, it seems like. Sorry for the scrolling here. There we go, and voila, much faster. So uh, I hope that it, that was possible to follow. Uh, I'll just go back to to the presentation. If it wasn't, I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, yes, that, that's you see the URL on screen where you can you can find more. And I'll just wrap up the last few minutes here with a little bit of conclusion. Uh, so, Redis Gears. I I am I have not created. I, I haven't contributed at all to the Redis Gears project. Unfortunately, maybe I will one day. Uh, but Redis Gears is very powerful. Redis modules uh, that lets you run code on your uh, Redis instances or Redis clusters. Of course, use with great power comes great responsibility. So use it responsibly. It is You can run arbitrary code here. So, so be, use it responsibly and put in the, the appropriate uh, uh, security measures. Um, <clears throat> it is an official Redis module from Redis, Redis Labs, or Redis now. Um, <clears throat> and Red Grease is, is the client package that I have created. Which makes it hopefully a little bit easier to work with uh, Redis Gears uh, in Python, and it makes it smoother. One thing I didn't show you, which I hope I can show you, is just that it, what it also provides is, if you look at an actually IDE here, all these all these uh, Redis Gears functions like filter, for example, has. Uh, Type annotations and also documentation. So if you're using a, a it should work in hopefully most uh, IDEs, Python IDEs, you will get this as you type with with all this completion and type checking with MyPy and all that stuff. If you, if you use that, so hopefully that that is that is useful as well. Um, uh, where am I? I need to go back here. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, okay, that worked. Um, and it's free and open source. Uh, do what you will with it. Uh, and if you find any bugs, which I'm sure there are plenty, let me know, and I'll do my best to, to fix them. Um, and it implements currently it implements the full Redis Gears command set. This is not entirely true. I think there are some new things that I haven't really, at least not tested properly. But most of it is there. Um, <clears throat> you you can execute uh, Redis codes as raw strings, as you see. You can. Also, one thing we, you didn't see is that you can actually provide the the pi execute with a with a file path, and it will read the file and execute that as a, as a gears function as well. So that could be quite useful as well. And you can also create those Redis gears function objects as, as I showed, right, and, and run them. Um, it has the 
the full Redis command, and uh, not the full Redis command set. It has most of the Redis command sets available to use inside Gears function. So you can do things like get and set and all these things. There are some limitations there with blocking operations that are not allowed in, in Gears functions, but pretty much most functions are supported that you can run in your Gears functions. Uh, as I mentioned, type hints, doc strings, etc., makes just life easier, particularly for, for people like me that are slightly dyslectic and need uh, all spelling help that's, <laughs> that could be provided. Um, and you can things things that are, I think are a little bit different from the, the default Redis Gears function is that you can reuse partial Gears functions. So it doesn't reuse the execution, but you can use the 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 the, the, the constructs or the the pipeline, so to speak. Uh, I also provide a few boilerplate and utility functions that make life easier to make sure uh, converting uh, objects to dictionaries and all things that you use quite often uh, are provided as well. I am happy to try to um, increase that as well. And there's also a simple, I, I mentioned very briefly, there's a command line tool which allows you to load uh, Redis Gears scripts that are in a separate files into a uh, Redis Gears enabled uh, Redis uh, server. Uh, and it also has this watchdog mode where it looks for changes of that script. And if there are changes, it re-registers uh, re -registers into, into uh, Redis Gears. So that's for rapid development and should not be used in production. Uh, so don't do that and come running to me if something goes bad. But but basically, it's very nice for production, very very or for development. Very, enables very rapid development for for this kind of stuff. Um, and the future, well, uh, this is not my main business to do this, but uh, I, I will. I have used it in production myself. Uh, it's um, I'm happy to support. I will continue to maintain it, hopefully, and uh, have no plans to abandon it. And I. Also, start working with other Redis modules that were new to me. So, like Redis AI, particularly, I used in my latest project and was quite uh, fond of it. So, I might do something with Redis AI as well um, because I have some similar ideas of how it could make made easier to work with. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that. And uh, feel free to uh, suggest any improvements on the GitHub page. Uh, uh, it's more than welcome. And uh, yes, I think, I don't know if this uh, slide deck can be made public, but uh, you have a number of resources. If you haven't checked out Redis Gears, regardless of Red Grease or not, check it out. I think it's pretty cool. It's one of the lesser known Redis, official Redis modules, but I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's pretty much it. And yes, some caveats also. The, the, if you're using the, the, the um, the Redis Gears function objects, create something like that. That only works if the client uses Python 3.7. And that's because it has to match the same version that is on the Redis, uh, uh, Redis Gears runtime. So as of now, the official Redis Gears, uh, at least the containers, come with uh, runtime 3.7.2, I think, Python 3.7.2. So it has to match there. So that's one caveat. But that's only for if you construct these object, uh, uh, objects and use it in your client code. Uh, if you use if you uh, use file uh, paths to send off uh, your Redis Gears functions, then as long as your uh, Gears function is is compatible with 3.7, then it's fine. Then your client code doesn't have to be. So I hope that all made sense. Um, and of course, be responsible when ex executing arbitrary code on your. <laughs> production servers and that's all from me i hope it all made sense and if not please feel free to ask any questions thank you very much thanks anders that was fantastic uh we got one comment uh during all this uh from shane cole he said uh, redis gears is so cool i wish he'd said red grease was so cool but uh, we'll take redis gears is cool <laughs> it is cool so that's that's all, all correct he said he just implemented the same thing using mod js and the debugging was a painful process uh, I have not used Mod.js, so I, I don't know how painful that is or not. I've done a lot of JavaScript, and I certainly know how painful that is. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I did want to say, and if you're still listening, that uh, Redis 7 is uh, uh, is an, uh, going to have uh, JavaScript functions as well. So you will be able to run JavaScript in Redis uh, that way as well with, uh, once Redis 7 is out. So uh, that's something to look forward to. I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm guessing that those new functions are using the same mechanism as, as Redis Gears. I'm guessing. Uh, I'm, I'm not. 
Uh, well, it's it's not part of the module, so it's not part of Redis Gears. Oh, okay. it's, it's part of open source okay. Redis. It was announced at Redis okay. Conf uh, a few months back. Yeah. Uh, so okay. uh, I think it's doing its own thing. It'll it'll be all. Up. It, there's probably okay. pull requests sitting out there in GitHub that you could go look at now if you were so inclined. Uh, although I was not inclined, so I didn't. <laughs> so, uh, um, but yeah, that was uh, fantastic. Um, thanks a lot. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, bring up my official thank you slide for both of you. So Justin, Anders, thank you very much uh, for uh, speaking tonight. Uh, sort is cool. Uh, red, uh, red grease is very, very cool as well. Um, I, I want to go play with it. So <laughs> let me uh, know what you think. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, I really do like it because it's, it's taken something because one of the, one of the challenges I've run into when I've done worked with uh, Redis gears is that I end up writing like Python files that I then write scripts to load up and then load. I'm just putting code up there or I mean, I'm just putting text up there. And then, then it doesn't work, and then I get to debug it. And, and I mean, at the very least, I've got syntax highlighting now, right? <laughs> that, that was actually the main thing that I wanted yeah. because I had so many typos in my in my text scripts that didn't. Have... And and that little cycle of I made a typo, I loaded in the Redis. Oh crap! I made a typo is kind of frust a little frustrating of a process. And this takes care of a lot of that. So I think it's a it's a great uh, great tool to enhance the user experience of using a using Redis, uh, using Redis gears specifically. So thanks for building it. Um, thanks. So, and thanks for uh, releasing it as open source. My pleasure. Um, and Justin, thank you for your short, your short stuff too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like gushing over Anders here. And then I was like, Oh, and thanks for your short, your sort, Justin. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I look forward to uh, you producing a video on uh, on sort for uh, the uh, the Redis YouTube channel. I think that yeah, cool. absolutely. And also after watching, um, this is the second time I've uh, seen Anders speak. Uh, the first time was at the Redis conference, and uh, I'm getting a little motivated to make a video on Redis gears because it looks so much fun to make, especially if red grease. It just looks so much, just so natural. So I'm really excited to, to dive into that. Yeah, is it making it's making me want to put together a talk on uh, Redis gears as well. Um, working title right now is, you know, run Python code on Redis. What? Uh, <laughs> so um, I think that could be a lot of fun. So um, don't miss next month. Uh, if you want to make sure you catch Redis Monthly Live every month, uh, go to meetups.redis.com slash redis-live. Uh, that, that little link there needs updated. Uh, however, it will still work. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash Redis Inc., not Redis Labs. Uh, obviously, I have not updated this slide yet. And, of course, follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Redis Labs, uh, which is a correct URL until we uh, uh, get that rebranded. So um, uh, subscribe to these. You'll you'll see the streams as they're happening, and you'll never miss a meeting. Um, Jose is very, uh, very uh, uh, clear that he wants more info on Redis Gears. Uh, Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> and uh, thanks a lot, Mauricio. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you want a little bit more um, afterwards, uh, I like to go hang out on the Discord server uh, in, in one of the um, audio video rooms there and just uh, hang out so that you guys can actually interact with us directly uh, so that you all can interact with us directly. Don't want to assume you're all guys. And um, I'll be there. Uh, I don't know if Anders is going to be able to join us or not. I know it's it's morning for him, so he's bright eyed and bushy tailed. Um, but uh, I have all the time in the world, and I, I usually I just want to mention. Sorry for interrupting, but I, I'm also usually hanging out in the uh, Discord Redis Gears channel. So if is there any Redis Gears questions, I sometimes answer if I can, which is also very appreciated. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so uh, we're gonna wrap up the meeting here. We're gonna go in the Discord, and uh, you can chat with us directly. And yeah, that's what we got. So thanks a lot for attending. Uh, thanks a lot uh, again, Anders. Thanks a lot again, Justin. And thanks a lot again, everyone else. Right. See ya. See ya. Ciao.